Uh, let's uh, check in on some Roe v. Wade stuff. Holy. It's Latin for many. Sick. Now suck your blood. Now suck Politics. your blood. Are you even woke? Woke up, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this is going to be just, just sort of straightforward, okay? This is a um, article from theguardian.com. And... Which is a UK outlet, by yeah, the way, but they opinion. love they love writing about uh, about the U.S. And this is from Robert Reich, uh, and the article is titled "It's an opinion piece: The Second American Civil War is Already Happening." Ooh, there's something about the a UK outlet writing about the Second American Civil War. I love it. That, it just grinds They're my like, gears, yes, man. Look at them f- trying mm. to eat each other while we and yes, sip our watch, tea. watch them fall, <laughs> those rebels. And it reads like this: The U.S. Supreme Court's upcoming decision to reverse Roe v. Wade, an early draft of which was leaked last week, doesn't ban abortions. It leaves the issue to the states. And I loved this about the article because it took a UK <laughs> article to UK be opinion piece, opinion, a UK <laughs> opinion piece about American Second Civil War to state to, the fact to finally state the facts about Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is not about a constitutional right to abortion. It is about a constitutional right to privacy between a doctor and his patient. And yet every U.S. outlet just loves saying that they love implying that Roe v. Wade was a is a law. They don't mention that it's a, a you know, a, a legal precedent. They consider it like it's written into the Constitution yeah, yeah. that abortions are there. Now, look, I get it. I, I don't need to anybody to explain to me the logic behind that. I'm just saying it's uh, deceptive. It's the media. What are you going to do? But it took a UK opinion piece, The Guardian, to say the US Supreme Court's upcoming decision doesn't ban abortions. It leaves the issue to the states. Again, the states, the, the whole concept of how our government is set up is specifically to leave many decisions up to the localities, which in this case are called states, um, versus some sort of big daddy government. But here we go. As a result, it will put another large brick in the growing wall separating blue and red America. Mm, build the wall. <laughs> build the wall. The second American Civil War is already occurring, but it is less of a war than a kind of benign separation analogous to unhappily married people who don't want to go through the trauma of a formal divorce. Wow, that's more colorful. It's a colorful and, and, thing. And, and, and it's a jab at American, uh, you know. The, the, yeah. the whole system here, too, with just yeah, how high is the our disunity. divorce rate? Yeah, it's like 60%. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, so the it's divorce a, it's rate, a jab. And it's wonderful because, you know, it's it's uh, this whole article is about the disunity in America as mm. if as if, as if like we were that's, unified <laughs> yeah. at any point. Or as really. if that's like the highest noble virtue right. of of a society is unity, unity yeah. you know, Um but calling it also, I mean, I love the juxtaposition of calling it an American Civil War, but also eh, a benign separation, <laughs> a friendly <laughs> agreement that we're unhappy together. And so, but we don't want to do the paperwork of a formal right, divorce. Right, we're not going to. One do. America, sorry. No, go ahead. One America is largely urban, racially and ethnically diverse and young. The other is largely rural or ex-urban, white and older. Eh, a little bit generalized, but that's the a least of our words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. And that's, the, I mean, yeah, 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 that speaks for itself. The split is accelerating. Red zip codes are getting redder and blue zip codes are getting bluer. If the nation's total 3,143 counties, the number of super landslide counties where a presidential candidate won at least 80% of the vote jumped from 6% in 2004 to 22%. 
in 2020. Surveys show that Americans find it increasingly important to live around people who share their political values. Animosity towards those in the opposing party is higher than at any time in living memory. This is an interesting uh, number here. 42% of registered Second voters time has popped up today. Uh huh. Uh, believe Americans in the other party are, quote, downright evil. <laughs> what an interesting poll to take where one of the answers is downright evil. I think the uh, poll is evil for even putting it, that there, but okay. Says a lot about the poll, doesn't yeah. it? Almost 40% would be upset at the prospect of their child marrying somebody from the opposite party. Even before the 2020 election, when asked if violence would be justified, listen to this, uh, even before the 2020 election, when asked if violence would be justified if the other party won the election, 18.3% of Democrats and 13.8% of Republicans responded in the affirmative. Mm. More Democrats say that violence is justified if Trump won the election than Republicans. Isn't that a surprising number? Not because of the of the truthfulness. Right, being but what we're opposite. told, like comparing it to what we're told about the, the narrative the far right and the Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The mainstream narrative is oh Republicans are militant and insurrectionists yeah. and own the guns and 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 they're the violent ones but in this it says <laughs> what is it let's see 18 this is five percent difference yeah. 18 that's like 30 oh my gosh maybe you can do the math on this okay but the difference between 13.8 percent and 18.3 percent has got to be pretty close to 33 percent difference 13.8 Plus 18.3 equals 32.1. Oh, my gosh. I did that with brain math. <laughs> it's not quite 33%, but it is interesting yeah, how it close interesting. it was. Mm -hmm. So 30, almost 33% more Democrats agree violence is necessary if Trump won the election than Republicans. That's just a mind-blowing thing. Again, that's what we get from this wonderful UK columnist. Increasingly, each America is running under different laws. That's why we are set up this way. Red states are making it nearly impossible to get abortions, but easier than ever to buy guns. They're also suppressing votes. In Florida and Texas, teams of election police have been created to crack down on the rare crime of voter fraud. Another fallout from Trump's big lie. Man, man, man. Okay, yes, protecting elections is such an evil thing for Republicans to do. They're banning the teaching of Americans' ra history of racism. What? <clears throat> what is that yeah, about? I know, I know. That sounds loaded. But, uh, they're requiring transgender students to use bathrooms and join sports teams that reflect their gender at birth. <gasps> <laughs> they're making well it down. harder. They're making it harder to protest, more difficult to qualify for unemployment benefits and other forms of public assistance, and almost impossible to form labor unions. Okay, we get it. Republicans bad. And they're passing bounty laws enforced not by governments, which can be sued in federal court, but by rewards uh, to private citizens for filing lawsuits on issues ranging from classroom speech to abortions to vaccinations. I'm not so sure about the 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 fullness of truth of that paragraph blue states are moving in the opposite direction several including colorado and vermont are codifying the right to abortion uh yeah so they're making abortion an actual law like an actual legal law little side note here democrats have been promising to codify roe versus wade for 50 years they've been running on this and not once has there been an actual attempt to do so. They've been using the the idea of abortion and Roe versus Wade as a weapon, as a cudgel to beat Democrats over the head to get them to vote for them. Because uh, if they actually went through and made Roe v. Wade a law, uh, then they would have nothing to beat up their constituents with. 
but that's besides the point. Some are helping cover abortion expenses for out-of-staters. Elon. When Idaho proposed a ban on abortions that empowers relatives to sue anyone who helps terminate a preg- pregnancy after six weeks, nearby Oregon approved $15 million to help cover the abortion spe- expenses of patients from other states. Maryland and Washington have expanded access to legal protections to out-of-state abortion patients. One package of pending California bills would expand access to California abortions and protect abortion providers from out-of-state legal action. So what they're referring to here is basically a legal framework that's going into place in a lot of the blue states where they are making basically abortions free or subsidized to red state travelers. So you've got... Right. And know, provide legal protection, like, oh, yeah. Texas is going to sue me. No, 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 not so fast. You are in the tender care of California or right. whatever. Yeah. But isn't it ironic that... You know, uh, well, let me give you some more here. This will actually explain it better. After the governor of Texas ordered state agencies to investigate parents for child abuse. Oh, listen to this. If they provide certain medical treatments to their transgender children, California lawmakers proposed making the state a refuge for transgender youth and their families. Notice how the, 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 the sort of vague description Of what Texas did. Oh, they they said Texas made it illegal for parents to give health care to their transgender children. Oh, what if they get cancer? What if they, what if they, what? No, no, no. The medical treatments are things like hormones and, uh, you know, genital reassignment surgery or whatever they say. Yeah, they're saying it's, uh, it's illegal. To, or they will investigate parents for child abuse if they, you know, put their seven-year-old through a, an irreversible surgery to change their gender. Another California proposal would thwart enforcement of out-of-state court judgments, removing children from the custody of parents who get them gender-affirming health services. So again, surgeries, hormones, puberty blockers, pretty I mean, significant health services, not just gender affirming. I mean, there's things there. California is also about to enforce a ban on ghost guns ooh, and assault weapons with a California version of Texas's recent six week ban on abortion featuring $10,000 bounties to encourage lawsuits from private citizens against anyone who sells, distributes or manufactures those types of firearms. Did you know this? No. They just basically copied the abortion law from Texas, but took out abortion and put in ghost guns. Ghost guns. Mm. Yeah. So it kind of goes through a lot of this, 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 these same sort of specific uh, things, which they're all actually very fascinating to read. And they are certainly expose the bias of this particular person. Um, But uh, going back to the red versus blue states, one of the points that he's making through all these stories is like the blue states are going to be spending a bunch of money to protect the red state people. Um, One of the fascinating ones, uh, I'm going to skip down because this was a really, really, here it is. Um, blue states have a potential role here. They should spend a dish. Oh yeah. Here's the answer. One answer is for democratic administrations and congresses in Washington to prioritize the needs of the red state poor and make extra efforts to protect the civil and political rights of people of color in red states. The failure of the Senate to muster enough votes to pass the Freedom to Vote Act, let alone revive the Voting Rights Act, suggests how difficult this will be. So he's suggesting that these blue states spend all the money to basically create services for, uh, for you know, the disadvantaged in the red states. So you kind of had the blue states playing nanny state, which they love to do. Um, but also nannying the poor of the red states, which, hey, Democrats spending money to take care of Republicans. This 
That's kind of a nice thing. Blue states have a potential role here. They should spend additional resources on the needs of red state residents, such as Oregon is now doing for people from outside Oregon who seek abortions. They should prohibit state funds from being spent in any state that bans abortions or discriminates on the basis of race, ethnicity, or gender. California already bars anyone on a state payroll, including yours truly, who teaches at UC Berkeley, from getting reimbursed for travel to states that discriminate against LGBTQ plus people. This was also an interesting thing that I did not know. Did you know that California state workers cannot get travel expenses reimbursed for going to, say, Texas? Yeah, I thought they did that, especially during some of the the COVID stuff with them. Well, when Texas did that thing earlier on, I remember California. Yeah, they uh, did ban sort of travel from other states, right? But um, you know, it's it's just an interesting. It's interesting because they're like, no, you can't go to red states. Yeah, and I can just imagine well, the red states being like. Yeah, thank you. Great. No, I know. Please that, don't come here. I, I feel like this is, like, of course, you know, we've talked about the balkanization of the United States, and mm-hmm. there's an element of, hey, we're supposed to be operating decentralized anyway, you know, state by state. Yeah. And so that's part of the beauty of America. But also, there, it's almost like the the whole narrative is trying to get people to mobilize so that we can have more war you know we can have more <laughs> like like battles between you know the populated states and and, yeah. and that's what it sounds like to me like hey if you live in a in a red state you know, and, come live in a blue state. This is how California is going to regain yeah. all their people, all the people they're, that well, left. That's what they're hoping. Yeah, yeah. they're like, hey, abortion. Pe- I mean, we're not going to. It's a long, not a good long term plan for uh, population growth. But uh, mm-hmm. hey, at least we get the the votes. Come to California, vote for Democrats, pay California taxes, <laughs> and uh, you can enjoy all Freedom! the good stuff. Yeah, of a blue state. You're going to love it. Um, and I love how he started out the article with like, America is so divided. We're dividing even more. And people are congregating around people like themselves. And then he says, they should prohibit. Uh, they should prohibit travel and money and <laughs> praises California for basically – um, you know, disincentivizing Californians from traveling to red states. So on one hand, he's kind of <laughs> lamenting the separation, uh-huh. but also encouraging laws that do the exact thing that he's lamenting. And I think it's on purpose. I think that's the whole point here. Yeah, yeah. Is that it's uh, it's an it's not an accident that this is happening. Well, th- th- this is the whole too much bureaucracy reaching a level of. Uh, just lunacy, really. I mean, speaking of and it's the next a, story, it's lunacy. Yeah, and it's it's a wonderful sort of uh, social engineering um, result. Now, this is almost done, and then we can move on. Okay. Where will all this end, he says? Not with two separate nations. What America is going through is analogous to Brexit, a lumbering mutual decision to go separate ways on most things, but remain connected in a few big things, such as national defense, monetary policy, and civil <laughs> and political rights. I don't know about that. America, okay. I know. Isn't that right. fun? Very myopic. America will still be a America, Uh but it is fast becoming two versions of America. Mm. The open question is like the one faced by every couple that separates. How will the two find ways to be civil toward each other? Mm. Robert Reich, great name, by the way. Robert Reich is a former U.S. Secretary of Labor. Mm. uh, is a professor of public policy at the University of... I was going to say, his name does sound familiar. Fun name, yeah, Robert Reich. Uh, anyways, he, he teaches at UC Berkeley and et cetera, et cetera. Has written a bunch of books. Uh, so I'm thinking he actually is not a UK citizen, um, but is writing for The Guardian, so that's fun. Mm. I'm sorry it took so long on it's that, right. but uh, I thought it was really fascinating considering the whole conversation with Roe v. Wade, separating people, giving power to the states. I believe that the blue states should embrace this and do what they want with their state. 